Hi, I'm Lisa. My goal with all of the videos on this channel is to help you reach that final level of fluency. This channel is for advanced learners of English who don't always feel confident about their English skills because they can't quite express themselves the way they can in their native language. Sometimes it's because they have a strong accent, so I teach the rules of the American accent. Or sometimes they're still making some little grammar mistakes. And sometimes they feel insecure because they're not familiar with the common everyday English expressions that native speakers use. In this video, a native speaker will teach you how to use some common English idiomatic expressions. We hear these expressions every day. Your favorite native speaker is back, Drake. You've probably seen Drake in my previous videos. He's very good at explaining the meaning of different expressions and he gives really good, clear examples. Meanwhile, when he's teaching you those expressions, I'm listening carefully and I'm planning a lesson in my head because he uses a lot of expressions also and I will teach you the expressions that he's using. Drake and I often meet in different parts of Los Angeles to film these videos. If you haven't seen any of my videos with Drake, make sure you watch them. I have added the playlist in the description below. Before you watch the video with Drake, I'd like to just mention one little thing. Below this video, you will see a heart symbol. This is called Super Thanks. If Drake has helped you with your English, you can thank him with a small donation and I will make sure that all of your gifts go directly to him. He's not expecting this. It's going to be a surprise. Okay, let's get started. You're going to learn some expressions. All of these expressions contain the word heart. Let's listen. To have heart, he has heart. That's a way to say that this person is really determined. They're ambitious. Um, they're not gonna let anything stop them. I box for fun. A lot of times that term is used in sports or boxing. Um, for someone that might not be the most athletic, but they have a lot of heart, you know, they're gonna still give you a good fight because they want to. The okay. determination's there. Do you have heart when you're boxing? I think so, yeah. To have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. A heart-to-heart -heart talk is a serious conversation. It might involve tears. It's a, an emotional conversation. Sometimes it can be a good thing. A boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband and wife, they can have a heart-to-heart -heart about their relationship. A mother and daughter can have a heart-to-heart. Friendship, they can have a heart to heart. You know, you rarely have a heart to heart with a boss or something like that, but it's possible. My heart isn't in it. My heart isn't in it. I don't actually feel something for this topic. I don't feel something for this activity. Um, I, I can do it still, but my emotion isn't there. Okay. I'm not putting a lot of effort into it. Got it's not it. a passion of mine. Can you give me an example where you tried something and your heart just wasn't in it, so you didn't continue doing it? Uh, sure. Uh, some relationships I've been in, you know, yeah. you could even use it for that. Right. Uh, maybe you can go on dates and have fun with the person, but if your heart's not in it, then it's kind of wasting your time. To have a big heart. To have a big heart. This person is generous. They're willing to give the shirt off their back. Let's listen to how Drake used the expression to give someone the shirt off one's back. To have a big heart, this person is generous. They're willing to give the shirt off their back. He said, they're willing to give the shirt off their back. If you're willing to give the shirt off your back, it means you're willing to do anything to help someone. You help someone even though it's a big sacrifice for you. You will even give them the shirt that you're wearing. You're willing to give them the shirt off your back. We can say, he's such a generous person he would give his shirt off his back to help someone in need. Let's listen to how Drake explains the expression, cross my heart. Cross my heart. I cross my heart. Um, usually the expression that I always remember hearing when I was a kid, I cross my heart and hope to die. It's, uh, it's a way to make a promise to someone. I don't know the origin of it, but I just yeah. know that a lot of people will say, oh no, I promise, I cross my heart. You know, it, this guy was seven and a half feet tall. I promise, I crossed my heart. He was really tall. You know? It's true, I'm telling you it's the truth. It's true, I'm telling you the truth. I crossed my heart, you know? You know, something like that. I crossed my heart. Let's listen to how some other people used cross my heart. You promise? I promise. 
Cross your heart. Yeah, cross my heart. I promise you. Cross your heart. Cross my heart and hope to die. <laughs> cross my heart and hope to die. It's all perfectly true. The next expression is follow your heart. Do you have the same one in your language? It might be the same. Let's listen to the way Drake explained it. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. Do the thing that you're passionate about. Do the thing that you that your gut instinct is telling you to do. Follow your heart. Um, do something regardless of if it seems realistic or not. Follow your heart. Let's listen to the way Drake used gut instinct. Do the thing that you that your gut instinct is telling you to do. Drake said, do the thing that your gut instinct is telling you to do. Your gut instinct is your instinctive feeling. Your gut is your stomach. So a gut instinct is when you feel something is true, you feel it in your body. It's not based on fact, but you know it's true. You can say, for example, my gut instinct told me not to trust him. When making decisions, I often listen to my gut instinct. Do you listen to your gut instinct? Let's listen to the way some other people used it. This is another way of, of building your instinct, your gut instinct, where sometimes you don't know why, but you know it sounds right. He was really crediting all of his success to his gut instinct. You may say to yourself, what's wrong with resorting to my gut instinct? Let's learn another expression with heart. Heavy heart. A heavy heart. Um, usually, to me, it's associated with sadness. Um, it's with a heavy heart that uh, we, we say goodbye to Kobe Bryant when he passed away. Los Angeles had a very heavy heart when Kobe Bryant passed away. It's with a heavy heart that you have to inform someone that something bad happened to their loved one. We often say, it's with a heavy heart that. For example, it's with a heavy heart that we have to inform you, and then you say something that's like bad news. We say it for something serious and something dramatic that happened, and we have to tell the person the news. For example, we can say, it's with a heavy heart that I have to tell you that she passed away. Or, it's with a heavy heart that I have to say goodbye to you. Let's learn another expression from Drake. You wear your heart on your sleeve. They show emotions. They wear their heart on their sleeve. They show their emotions on their face. You know exactly what they're thinking or what they're feeling. Yeah, you can, you, you can see it. It's written on their face. Their feelings are written on their face. Let's listen to how Drake used the expression, it's written on their face. You know exactly what they're thinking or what they're feeling. Yeah, you can, you, you can see it. It's written on their face. He said, their feelings are written on their face. Usually we use the expression this way. It's written all over his face. It's written all over her face. And that means you can see what the person is feeling or thinking just by looking at them. We can say, I know you're lying. It's written all over your face. Or you can say, she was trying to hide her sadness, but it was written all over her face. From the bottom of my heart. From the bottom of my heart. I mean it wholeheartedly. That's another one. Yes. Um, I, I'm, from the bottom of my heart, I truly mean it. I'm not lying. Um, I truly feel what I'm telling you. I love you from the bottom of my heart. That means my whole heart from the bottom to the top. I love you. Let's listen to the way Drake used wholeheartedly. From the bottom of my heart, I mean it wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly means completely, sincerely, without any doubt, with my whole heart. We can say, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I support you wholeheartedly. If he wins the election, he will serve the people wholeheartedly. My heart goes out to you. My heart goes out to you. Um, that's an expression that someone with a big heart would probably say. My heart goes out to you. I feel for you. Um, something, something happened. Uh, let's say that something happened to someone's husband. You can write them on Facebook or you can tell them when you see them. I'm so sorry to hear about your loss. My heart goes out to you. I, I really understand what you're going through, or maybe I don't understand what you're going through, but I'm here for you. I'm hurting for you. By heart, to know something by heart, or to memorize something by heart. To memorize something by heart means that you know all of it. If you have a song memorized by heart, you can sing the whole song. You don't have to read the lyrics, or um, let's say that maybe you had a speech to give. If you really read it over and over and over, 
you wanted to memorize it by heart. That way you didn't have to refer to it later when you were giving the speech. You just know it by heart. Like we know of our favorite songs by heart. By heart. You know it like the back of your hand. Drake used the expression to know it like the back of your hand. Let's listen. By heart. You know it like the back of your hand. To know something like the back of your hand is to know something completely, to know all the details, to know everything about it. You can say, I've lived in this city my whole life. I know this city like the back of my hand. Or you can say, I've sung this song many times. I know this song like the back of my hand. That nearly gave me a heart attack. That's an expression referring to a medical condition because uh, you were so surprised or so scared that um, you're saying that maybe your heart went, it skipped a beat. I, well, my mom is actually really scared of heights, so that Ferris wheel might give my mom a heart attack or the idea of it. Um, if you, when I was a kid, I liked to prank people. I would hide behind a, a sofa or behind a wall and I'd come out, boo, scare people. And my grandma would say, or my aunt, or my mom would say, Oh, Drake, you almost gave me a heart attack. What are you doing, you know? Drake said, it skipped a beat. You were so surprised or so scared that um, you're saying that maybe your heart went, it skipped a beat. We can say, my heart skipped a beat. When you're suddenly very surprised or excited or shocked about something, you can say, my heart skipped a beat. Your heart beats. But when you're very excited, you can say, my heart skipped a a beat. When I heard the news, my heart skipped a beat. Or when my boss called me to his office, my heart skipped a beat. I was really nervous. I was scared. My heart skipped a beat. Drake said Ferris wheel. So that Ferris wheel might give my mom a heart attack. He said that Ferris wheel might give my mom a heart attack. Did you know the meaning of the word Ferris wheel? This is a Ferris wheel. Have you ever been on a Ferris wheel? Let's listen to the way Drake pronounced scared of heights. Uh, well, my mom is actually really scared of heights. Drake said, my mom is scared of heights. Be careful, we don't say heights. That's not a TH, it's an HT. That's a common mistake. I've heard people say heights. It's not heights, it's heights. You can say scared of heights, but we often say fear of heights. I don't like to climb ladders because I have fear of heights. I'm afraid to look down because I've got fear of heights. Let's listen to the way Drake used the verb to prank. When I was a kid, I liked to prank people. Drake said, when I was a kid, I liked to prank people. To prank people means to play a trick on someone. It's supposed to be funny, but sometimes it hurts that person. Maybe it makes that person look silly or bad. It's a trick to surprise someone. For example, he was hiding behind the tree and he jumped out to scare me. He pranked me or he played a prank on me. We can use it as a verb to prank someone or as a noun to play a prank on someone. He thought it was a real spider, but it was a prank. We played a prank on him. To have your heart set on something. To have your heart set on something is you really want it. You desire it. Um, it's a dream of yours. It's a okay. goal of yours. Uh, you're not going to stop until you accomplish it. If it doesn't happen, you'll be deeply disappointed. I really had my heart set on going paintballing with my friends. I really had my heart set on going fishing with my friends. I really had my heart set on finding a woman to marry one day. Right. Something like that. I had my heart set on going somewhere. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's a way to say that um, when someone's not around or when you don't have access to something, it makes you love it more. Uh, it makes you miss that thing. Uh, it's like me. I've been in long distance relationships before and when that person's not there, you really realize what they mean to you because they're not there. Their absence makes you more fond of them. The absence makes the heart grow fonder. Let's listen to how Drake used to be around. When someone's not around, when someone's not around. He said, when someone's not around. To be around means to be here, to be in this area, to be in your life. You can say, look at that cat. He's always around. Or, where have you been? 
I haven't seen you around. I miss you when you're not around. Have they left town yet? No, I think they're still around. Have a heart. Have a heart. You're telling someone to try to feel the situation. Um, try to understand it. Don't be so cold hearted. That's another one. Yeah. Don't be so cold. Um, uh, try to try to see where this person is coming from. Well, have compassion. Have compassion. Be compassionate. Um, if you're walking with your friend and you see a, a less fortunate person, a homeless person on the side of the street, and they ask for a dollar from you and your friend, and you give the dollar, and your friend just says, no way, you say, come on, man, have a heart. This guy's going through a hard time. Have a heart. Okay, so have heart and have a heart are completely different meanings. Completely different things, yeah, because when you have heart, you're brave and you're courageous and determined, but telling someone to have a heart is telling them to be compassionate. Drake used the expression to see where someone is coming from. Let's listen. Don't be so cold. Try to see where this person is coming from. He said, try to see where this person is coming from. We can say, I see where you're coming from, or I know where you're coming from. And that means, I understand your situation, or I understand your beliefs or your ideas, or I understand your decision. I understand why you said that or why you did that. Maybe I don't agree, but I see where you're coming from. For example, we can say, I wouldn't do what you did, but I see where you're coming from. Or you can say, I've been through the same situation as you. I know where you're coming from. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Have you ever heard that? Yes, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach means that men love uh, good food. It's usually a saying for women, a way to get a man to appreciate you is to cook for him. Or men really care about, you know, having a home cooked meal. You know, he'll, he'll love you if you cook him a good home cooked meal. Okay. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to go through the McDonald's drive through We want to have a home cooked meal. Half hearted. Half hearted. You're not doing something with your full heart. You're not giving it your full attention. You're not giving it uh, your your true passion, you're doing something half-hearted. You're only giving a little bit of effort. We can say half-hearted effort. If you make a half-hearted effort, that means you don't try very hard. You can also say a half-hearted attempt. Or you can say he made a half-hearted apology. It wasn't sincere. His apology was half-hearted. Let's listen to the way Drake and I use the expression, you're not into it. You're not into it. You're just giving a little bit of effort. If you say, I'm not into it, it means I'm not enjoying it. I'm not interested in it. I'm not excited about it. I went to the concert, but I wasn't really into it. It wasn't exciting for me. I didn't really enjoy it. You probably know broken hearted. Let's listen to Drake. Broken hearted. Broken hearted. Um, when someone is broken up with, that breaks their heart, broken hearted. They are deeply hurt by something. You love with your heart, and so when you're broken hearted, it's almost like saying that they, they broke your heart. Something you're, didn't work out. Something didn't work out. You're torn up about it. Um, oh, it didn't work out with John and Stacy. They broke up. Now John is broken hearted. Drake said, when someone is broken up with. When someone is broken up with, that breaks their heart, broken hearted. When your boyfriend or girlfriend ends the relationship with you, you are broken up with. It's painful to be broken up with. Drake used the expression torn up. Let's listen. Something didn't work out. You're torn up about it. Drake said, you're torn up about it. We can say to be torn up or to be all torn up. And that means to be very upset, to be very emotional about something. We can say, he's been all torn up since his girlfriend broke up with him. The heart wants what it wants. The heart wants what it wants. Um, regardless of if it seems like a good decision, that's what you want. Uh, a lot of times I hear this for relationships as well. Um, maybe a guy is not a good guy. There's a lot of red flags. He uh, parties too much. He talks to a million different girls. But if this girl really likes him, she would say, the heart wants what the heart wants. I'm sorry, I, I like this guy. Yeah. 
Do you know the meaning of red flags? Let's listen to the way Drake used it. Maybe a guy is not a good guy. There's a lot of red flags. He uh, parties too much. He talks to a million different girls. Drake said there's a lot of red flags. Do you have the same expression in your language? A red flag is a sign. It's a warning that there's a problem that you need to pay attention to, especially related to a person you just met or someone you're trying to get into a relationship with. For example, you can say, your new boyfriend has been married three times? That's a red flag. When you're in love, you sometimes don't see the red flags. He lies a lot. That's a big red flag. In your native language, do you also say red flag for the same thing? Thank you so much, Drake. No problem. I love this. You can follow Drake on Instagram. His Instagram name is Drake Reyes one And remember, if you would like to thank Drake, there is a heart below that you can click on. It's called Super Thanks. You can surprise him by giving him a little gift. And I will make sure that all of those donations go directly to Drake. They're not for me, they're for Drake. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To get the two courses, the American Accent Course and the 400 Advanced Words You Must Know for Fluent English, go to accurateenglish.com.